Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome back to my Mississippi Talk series. And in today's video, we will be covering the results from the 2021 primary mayoral election of Jackson, Mississippi. <music> Before we start, I would recommend that all of you watching watch my previous video covering the candidates, their positions, policies, and my predictions. In today's video, we're going to be covering who won, obviously, you know, the results. But we'll also be covering how my predictions were correct and wrong, depending on which one we're talking about as well as some other related topics that have reached the news. First, among the Democrat Party, Chakwe Lumumba, the incumbent, won with 69.23% of the votes, exactly 13,735 votes. In second place came Kenneth Wilson, who got 3,689 votes, or 18.59% of Democratic voters, while Patty Patterson came in a distant third place with 2,417 votes, or 12.81% of the Democratic vote. I predicted this outcome because, well, in all honesty, Lumumba, despite being a horrid candidate and just a terrible person in general, is the incumbent, and he is relatively popular, especially among black people. Wilson getting second place, I also predicted as well. I did this because Wilson in general had a stronger, more solid set of ideas he wanted to do, whereas Patty Patterson really didn't convey her ideas in a strong or solid manner. For the Republicans... The numbers are far smaller. Jason Wells won with 293 votes, or 73.62 of the Republican vote, while Ponto Downing got 105 votes, or 26.36% of the Republican vote. Now, unlike the Democrat Party, I didn't outright say who I thought I would win. I just said that it could go either way, and that is true. But I definitely did not expect this low of a turnout for either of the candidates. And the reason why Jason Wells won is well obvious. He's black. I wish I could be more nuanced about it, but legitimately that is the only reason he won. It's a sad state of affairs that many voters look to the color of someone's skin as opposed to their character. And I'm not saying that as a way to mean Jason Wells. The point I'm trying to make is, is that I believe that both Republican candidates in this race were equally strong. And that it really came down to more superficial things to decide who would win. Granted, in general, I think that Ponto Downing, I like him more, but as a person... When it comes to their policies, they're pretty much the same. All in all, only 398 people voted for the Republicans, and 19,841 voted for the Democrats in this primary election. Just as a quick aside, in my precip, where I went to vote, when by the time I had left, only 13 people had voted Republican, and 159 people voted overall. In fact, there are places that had such low turnouts that the reporters literally asked one of the first 10 voters who she had voted for an hour before the polls were supposed to close. The 10th person. Can you believe that? That is terrible voter turnout. To be more specific... A total of 
20,239 people voted. That is from a population of 426,000 with a turnout rate of 4.75%. That is horrible. Just gosh, terrible. And it's really quite a shame that when it comes to primary local elections and just local elections in general, there is such low voter turnout. I am the only person, the only independent commentator who covered this. And yet, despite that, I get mocked for it by, you know, pseudo-intellectuals like Pimp Monk. This lack of voter turnout is really one of the reasons why a lot of these races are not competitive and why they often result in a one-party district. And it's really a negative thing. These are quite dark times, unfortunately. What is not so sad is the fact that Jason Wells proposed to his wife once he won the campaign. And, you know, that may not be the most professional thing to do, but it is the most heartful thing to do. It is amazing to me that someone would propose in such a major event. Because it can be embarrassing sometimes, or it, can be, it takes a lot of courage and inner strength to do that. Here's some footage of that. And now you're engaged. And I love my wife. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am. You're blushing, I can tell. So obviously a <laughs> momentous night tonight with Jason Wells as we look forward now to the runoff election. Back to you. Another event related to this is that during the election, some complained that there was alleged voter suppression, but really it was just because some Democrats changed the exact building they were voting on, but they did report it before the vote took place. They did change it, but they changed it with enough time that people who actually gave a shit would have been able to research it. I'm so sick of the term voter suppression being thrown around by anyone with no regard of what that actually means. I'm sorry, but not every inconvenience is voter suppression. If you're too much of a moron to look up where you're supposed to vote before you vote, you're not an informed citizen. You're not an informed voter. But when I looked I'm it sorry, up on last night, you told me that I had a vote. It is your civic duty to learn and where to vote changes again and vote in five of the city's seven. Also, while these events are not surprising, I am happy, at least in some regard, because they really disprove the notion that Mississippi as a whole is just a bunch of white rednecks that blindly vote Republican. For some really stupid reason, a lot of liberals in my state, like the notorious jackass John Crowley, a.k.a. known as Pimp Monk, really have this... Um, victimhood complex where they're like, I'm the only liberal in K Mississippi. I'm the only one. I'm so pressed because I'm gay and liberal. No, you're not. When the Democratic votes in a region outnumber the Republicans to such an extent as occurred in this mayoral election, this is not a red state. Gosh, I, I'm so sick of people playing the victim. Like, you're not the victim, dude. And if you hate Mississippi so much, um, either um, get less sensitive, or, I don't know, move to some um, liberal trash hole like Portland, Oregon, or Rutland. I know your buddy Jeff Holiday. you know, whenever he's not catching gnarly waves, dude, is you know, beating up people that disagree with him because he's an, an Antifa super soldier. He also has a Nambla tattoo, and you being a part of a certain community, you might really like that, Pimp Monk. Sorry to go on that little bit of a rant, but I felt it was necessary. So in conclusion, what can we learn about this results? Well, they were really to be expected. But I did predict them, so technically speaking, I correctly predicted the election. Funny, I've actually correctly predicted every election and when it comes to Mississippi that I've ever talked about. Very interesting that people who don't like me pretend that I'm a moron. Mm, I seem to be a little I seem to be a little smarter than certain people who all they do is live stream and e-bag for money. Anyway, I'm the Dark Master, and don't worry if you don't like this sort of thing. This isn't going to be a regular. It's only going to happen every so often. 
indeed. My next video, I guarantee, is going to be a Kirby right back at your retrospective. So look forward to that. I'm the Dark Master, and if you like to my content, subscribe. Have a good day.